had kids. My first son was born about 12 and a half years ago. It kind of made me aware of what's going on in the world and the planet and how do I build a future for them. And so that's really got me involved in the sustainability aspects. And so with Urban Machine, I get to combine all three, technology, construction, and sustainability to solve a really pressing problem that makes life better for everyone. It's a truly renewable, natural growing material, right? It grows in the forests, it cleans the air, it stores carbon, it gives us clean rivers. You know, it's a beautiful material. It's also got a human aspect to it. When you walk into a wood frame building or that's got exposed timbers on it, it's a much more warm, welcoming building and the architects love it. They love using wood where they can on the inside of buildings. And so that was probably the big aha moment of, hey, this is a massive problem. Let's figure out, is there a way to solve it? He had this idea for Urban Machine and I immediately connected to it. He started talking about the amount of wood waste and that technology was really the barrier preventing this material from getting used again. We've had several breakthroughs generally in the robotics community that's made what we're doing possible today. Things like computer vision and AI algorithms. I really like Urban Machine's story because no one's doing this. The real customer pain point to get customers wood is removing the metal so that it can be reprocessed, planed down, and, and normalized for, for people. You know, doing the same thing over and over thousands of times a day, it's too laborious of a task for humans. It's a perfect application for robots. Our processing line is almost 80 feet long, 15 feet wide. However, inside the machine, there's a lot going on. It's a complex system. In our main picker cell, we have four different robot arms all moving around each other in order to pick the lumber out. It's so magical every time when a robot comes to life. One specific tool that's sort of our fan favorite, we call the Big Bird. It's the one that has the big nasty steel talons on the front of it that's responsible for ultimately picking the nails out of the lumber. Our picker cell alone has 26 motors in it that all have to be individually controlled in order to achieve this function. So it has to be ultra fast, but it has to be strong too. Sometimes we have to pull with several hundred pounds of force to get a framing nail out of a board. One thing that people find really surprising about our system is that the whole thing uses about the same amount of power as a home refrigerator. We can power our entire system off of a handful of solar panels that we bring along to the site in a little trailer. And then we run it through a metal detector to make sure we got all the metal out. One of the great things is we're building robots without replacing people's jobs. We're actually creating jobs with our robots, which is a big challenge for most other robotics companies. For us, it's a huge win. So they are already paying tipping fees to the landfills to store all of this material. Instead, we come in and we say, please, can you just give us the wood for free? And so they don't have to pay landfills. They get a story that they are saving the world as well. And we get a story where we have free lumber and we know what to do with that. And so what they can do is they can sell reclaim lumber back into the lumber ecosystem at about a 10x value over the wood chips. Wood chips are typically, you know, 10 to 50 bucks a ton, depending on where you are. Reclaim lumber is 200 to $2,000 a ton. There's a dramatic economic incentive there for our customers, and it's a much more sustainable solution. Reclaim lumber has all these great benefits. As lumber ages, especially the softwoods like Douglas fir, which is predominant on the west coast of the United States, it gets harder. And it actually becomes more fire resistant and more bug resistant as it gets harder. The older lumber that we're harvesting from our buildings today, a lot of it is considered old growth. You can't roll up to your local department store and find this on the shelf anywhere. And if we weren't to do this, it would be lost forever. Why should somebody invest in an urban machine? So it's a large problem. Nobody else is solving this problem, right? Massive market, you know, it's probably about 18 billion here in the US. And so we're tackling a sustainability problem from the economic side.